stragglers to come in. Heather, you're not the only one, so <laughs> come on down. Very good. It's good to see you this morning. Any announcements that we should be giving before we get started? We have a bunch of them during announcements, but okay?
young pavement or in the Hebrew gathering. Now it was the day of preparation, of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. emperor. Then he handed him over to, to be crucified. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord. You can 
you're up to. All right, the rest. Oh, jeez. Thanks, you guys. Gosh. Be honest. Go get those points, and I'll give you a candy when you come back. No, you're going to insist on your candy now. Okay. Fine. And come on, I want to hear the noisy. Saul. 
this strong, tall warrior is really faithful at first. But soon he fails to listen. He fails to obey God's every command. And the rest of Saul's story is a tragic tale of a great king who falls into despair and cuts himself off from his family and God. Despair and alienation instead of trust and obedience to find his rule. As Saul fails, God has Samuel anoint Daniel. David, David, David. In contrast to Saul, David personifies trust in Israel's God and successfully defends his people against their enemies. Now, the original hearers of 1 Samuel would see both the advantages and the limitations to having a king. They and their leaders would be challenged to listen to God above all and respond in obedience. This is also an important message for God's people in any time or any place. No king or leader, no military, no voice of the people, no person or thing is as dependable and faithful as God. All and especially leaders are called to place their trust in God and follow God's leading. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, Samuel gives one of the longest speeches in the Old Testament against kingship and the abuse of public power. He repeatedly uses the word take. This word occurs often in Samuel's warnings about having a king. A king will take much away, which is exactly the opposite of God who acts to bless. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king, and he said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to his horsemen, and to run before his chariots. He will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and to equip his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers, He'll take the best of your fields and vineyards and all of orchards and give them to his couriers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his couriers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks. You will be his slaves. And then that day you'll cry out because you're king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. Pilate asked them, shall they crucify your king? We have no king but the emperor. The major theme of the history of Israel that they claimed God as their true king. That God had loved, tolerated, protected them throughout history. It was common knowledge that these people hated Caesar. Yet now they say, we have no king but Caesar. But we can't shake our fingers at the Israelites or Ruben. For we have done the same things to our Lord and Savior. This is one of the reasons we must remind ourselves every year of the consequences of our lack of trust and faith in God. We must know our history to prevent making the same mistakes again and again. This is why Holy Week is so important. This is why Lent is so important. We must walk with our Lord. We must go to that cross with Him. And on Easter Monday morning, we must go to the empty grave. What about Pilate? Was he innocent in all of this? Absolutely not. Some have tried to soften his role in the crucifixion by portraying him as a helpless victim of circumstances imposed upon him by the Jews. But upon a closer look, we see a spineless leader. Pilate ordered 
the scourging of Jesus. Then he sentenced him to death, knowing and admitting that he was an innocent man. Yes, Pilate had the unenviable task of deciding the fate of an accused Jewish blasphemer. The religious issues are no consequences to this Roman official, but sending an innocent man to death might agitate his conscience for a while, don't you think? So who wants a king? We do, if his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand and sing our hymn of the day. Were you there?
We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, we would sooner argue to justify ourselves than surrender and discover what treasures that there may be in yielding to your will. Make Jesus our model of unwavering faithfulness and give us strength to be as courageous in the face of threats to our status and safety. Step by the sword. The cries of crucify still ring in our ears. Every time an innocent is punished, every time a uh, guilty one goes unquestioned, every time your creation suffers from abuse and misuse, forgive us and show us the way that leads to life. Steadfast Lord. The long repentance season is nearly ended. The day of reckoning is ever nearer. Accompany us in this journey, Lord. Secure us in the knowledge that your resurrection stands at the other end. Steadfast Lord. For all with no voice, make us advocates of God. For those who are lonely and feel abandoned, make us companions. And for all who suffer any illness or trial, make us bringers of a healing word and a steady hand. Steadfast Lord. For all those who stood trials on behalf of your gospel, for all who gave their lives in service to a larger truth, we give thanks. Join us to saints of old, among those among us still, and number us among your redeemed. Steadfast Lord. For prayers are not enough, move us to act as your faithful servants on earth, empowered by your spirit and inspired by your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and we'll have a prayer and we'll take up our offering.
worship in all times and in all places, offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, my almighty and ever-living God, you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.